Hi and welcome to a new Q&D tutorial for Fusion 9. This is a tutorial for the studio version because it includes so much new cool stuff that I'd like to share it with you. Uh, one of the things that is new in Fusion Studio 9 is the fact that a planar tracker is now included. Well of course you can use this planar tracker for billboards or window replacements or other kind of uh, boring stuff but uh, one of the things that are very popular right now are uh, ways to make people look younger actors or actresses since i don't have an actress at my disposal i w went uh, looking for someone slightly older a bit grayish with lots of wrinkles and i found him staring back in the mirror yeah that would be me as you can see, when I lift my eyebrows, lots of wrinkles appear. And I'm trying to get rid of those with Fusion Studio's new planar tracker. First, I'm going to find a frame that I want to clean up. Then I add a tool, tracker, planar tracker, like so. You can tell it right here. Personally, I like my button style to be text label so I can see what I'm doing. And then I select the part of my face that I want to track and get rid of. Like so. I tell the planar tracker that this is my reference time, so it sets to 15. Then I track back in time to zero, like this. I go back to frame 15 and track forward to the end. As you can see, Fusion does its best to follow the movement of my head and try to make a stable track out of it. Now I'm not going to go for a perfectly finished result. I'm just going to show you the principle of it because it can always be better. Well, here we go. I have a planar track like this. It moves with my head. It changes shape when my face changes shape. So this is all the way it's supposed to be. Now I create a planar transform which allows other footage to conform to the track that was just created. And I'm going to use this first frame. First I'm going to duplicate the loader. And then I'm going to hold the first frame for the duration of the shot, because even though a few wrinkles are visible, they are nothing compared to the wrinkles that are visible at frame 15. So what I'm going to do now is put this into there and put the footage of the wrinkleless me on top of it through the planar transform. And when I do nothing with the footage, it looks kind of weird. Well, this has something to do with the fact that I tracked my forehead and the rest of my face was attached to a plane. We don't need my whole head, we just need this part. And since we started, uh, since we set the reference frame to be frame 15, the frame is identical at frame 15. It changes when I move back and it changes when I move forward. So. I'll merge it on top of the original footage, right there, but I only cut out the part I like or I need. And I do this by using a matte control. I add a garbage matte polygon, and I say, oh, okay, this is a nice part of my face. to put on top of the original footage. You see, lots of eyebrows. Ah. But when I invert it, you see that it's frame 15 with frame one combined. 
there's a bit too much in there. So I move it over my eyebrows like so. And I soften the edge a little bit so it isn't as noticeable. And as you can tell, I can fade out my wrinkles like this. Well, the fun part of using a planar tracker is the fact that you can now use the planar transform to move the track data and put it on top of my face, like so. And as you can tell, my wrinkles are gone. This part is a bit unrealistic right now. So I'm probably I probably want to move this down a little bit and feather it a little more so it doesn't get the hard edge of the original. Well, as you can tell, we're almost done with replacing my wrinkles with a nice smooth forehead. Fusion did a good job uh, by tracking the eyebrow movements. You can tell that it squeezes and stretches uh, the original track data and moves with my eyebrows. So we're almost there. The only thing that happens when I turn my head like this is that you can tell that the piece that's put on top of it is slightly overlapping my face, which happens around here. This is the maximum. And I want to move that back a little. To do this, I can select all the points of my polyline and move the side a little bit to the side. Like this. Make it slightly more subtle. And this way it will move slightly to the side. And as you can tell, there's no more uh, part of the tracked plane sticking out of the top of my head. So, there you go. All wrinkles are gone. And of course, technically, some things can be improved because when I look that way, there's a shiny spot. And because I move this part, there is no shiny spot. You can use all kinds of tricks in Fusion to make it conform to the reality even more. But if you don't have the original footage to compare it with, like this, this looks pretty decent because here and here you still have the effect of the original lighting. I'll make a preview and final resolution. Watch it on full screen and loop it. So for all intents and practical purposes, this looks pretty, pretty good, especially since the fact that we've spent less than, well, 12, 10, 12 minutes doing it. So yes, it can be better, but it's pretty damn good as it is. So thank you for watching. I hope this gives you some idea of what the planar tracker can be used for. I'll see you back soon for another Q&D tutorial. Bye bye.